Good afternoon, this is Ron Brown. It's 4.03 on Friday, the 28th of January. Uh, this is my uh, weekend report. We had a very strong close today. The market uh, was uh, down early and then it uh, reversed and uh, the last hour saw a uh, tremendous uh, gain. Now this is a daily chart of the uh, NASDAQ uh, E-minis and you can see that uh, we had a reversal here. It opened, uh, traded down to this point around the 13,837 level and closed uh, near the uh, high of the day. The trend is still down, no question about it, but it's uh, there's a, a consolidation in here. Now I notice the volume uh, today is not quite as much as it was yesterday or even the day before or the day before that, which was a strong down day. Now this day was very heavy volume where the market to gap down, formed a uh, hammer-like candle, and then it uh, failed. So we can, we can fail again, but uh, today's close uh, was encouraging. I'm going to move over to the ES, or the uh, S&P E-minis. And I just happen to have a Fibonacci uh, retracement on here. And you can see that uh, we're right around the 38.2 level below it. Probably around minus 40 right now from this high up here down to this low. We see the same thing here that we saw on the NASDAQ. Uh, opening price reversed. Closed near the high of the day. Volume was not... Uh, not all that great uh, compared to uh, volume around it. Let's take a quick look at the uh, the uh, NASDAQ itself. No volume on the NASDAQ. I have some levels in there. These are not uh, Fibonacci levels. They're just price levels that I uh, draw in showing resistance and support. And um, I've drawn them in as the market has gone down. But you can see here clearly that the, uh, the trend is still down, but this consolidation here with the uh, strong close, uh, like I said, is encouraging. So maybe the bottom is in here, but I, uh, you know, we could we could have something like this too, where it rallies up to here and then goes back down and just scares everybody to death, and then it uh, takes off again. Uh, just remember. Forget the pundits. Nobody knows what the market's going to do. All you have to do is watch it. And, uh, you know, going back 100 years to Wyckoff, he, he said the market will tell you what it wants to do. Just don't uh, listen to people. Everybody's got an opinion and, and an agenda. Uh, anyway, let's, let's do a couple more things here. I don't want this to be a, a very long discussion, but... I wanted to bring this grid up. I'm going to concentrate on the volume over here. This is the NASDAQ volume. This is the NYSE volume. I'm going to make this a full-size chart. And you can see that today's volume was less than yesterday's and uh, quite a bit lower than two days ago. It was about the same as uh, uh, on uh, Tuesday. And Monday's volume was extremely high when we had that uh, strong sell-off and then uh, then a reversal. Uh, this is a trick you can do uh, if you want to see how it's stacking up intraday. I'm going to use a 78 minute chart and you can see that these 78 minutes show you the volume during those periods. Heavy at the open and then it got a little bit less and then less around midday. Stayed about the same for this 78 minute period and then the last 78 minute minute period the volume was extremely heavy or much heavier. I'm going to go back. I, I had a one month one day on here before. I'll restore this cell and you can see the volume about the same on the NYC. Not as heavy today. For such a a massive turnaround uh, I would expect the volume to be higher but uh, uh, not necessarily doesn't necessarily have to be I just uh, would assume it would be okay I'm gonna do uh, something else in here I'm gonna go into market watch what I did and I showed this in the webinar on Thursday I imported all of the stocks that we have in HGSI groups into 
a think or swim. You just uh, create a, a watch list and uh, paste them in. And what it'll do, it'll break it down according to the sectors or their sectors. Now, their, their industry groups are not the same as ours. Uh, a lot of them are very, very similar, of course, but uh, uh, others aren't. So, for example, uh, uh, Visa, which is one of the catalysts for the market today in MasterCard, they're in the information technology sector in HGSI. They're in a, a financial sector. So uh, they differ in some uh, respects, but in others, they're pretty much the same. But it's really nice because you can just import the entire list in, and then it will break the stocks down according to their classification into groups. So uh, I believe uh, we have Visa and Consumer uh, Finance, which makes more sense to me than Information Tech, but uh, whatever. But what this does is it gives us a, a, a nice visualization of where the strength was. And you can see that Visa and MasterCard and Apple really stand out. Some of the biggest gainers, NVIDIA, NVIDIA had a good day at 408%. Now, where was the weakness? Looks like the weak, weakness was in energy today. If I go down here to the energy section, energy equipment, and oil and gas, you can see that there, this uh, this was weak today. It's been strong for for a long time, but a little pullback today. Okay, I'm going to uh, get out of here. Let's go on to HGSI. This is a list. Now, what I did is I went ahead and uh, and updated. Uh, using uh, thinkorswim data at the end of the day, but uh, these were coming up today anyway. These are the most active stocks intraday. And if I click on this, it shows what they are, what, what groups they're in. And if I click on, let's see, consumer finance. Let's see if that's where. Yeah, Visa and MasterCard are in here. And uh, you can see that uh, when I click on Visa, it uh, it had a very, very good day on strong earnings. And it's uh, broken past resistance on the daily chart. Let's take a look at it on, on a weekly chart here. Uh, see, see, weekly charts put it in perspective, don't they? I have support and resistance lines here. You can see that Visa traded up at one point to what about 252, and where are we right now? We closed at uh, 228. I'm sorry, that's the high. The close is uh, two. Yeah, 228 closed on the high. But going forward, just look to the left. There could be some. Uh, uh, resistance here. It got bogged down here before. It just depends on what the market does. But today it was one of the catalysts. Let's take a further look at this. Application software. A um, bunch of names. I'm not. I'm familiar with them, but I, you know, they're not uh, stocks that I uh, look at every day. And you're going to find that even with a lot of these stocks that were up strongly today, they're in strong downtrends. Let's see if I have that information. Okay, let's see. I'm going to find this little dot down here. And let's scroll to the right. So a lot of these stocks are up sharply today. If you look at this VPA, short term, medium term, and long term, the ones that are down, down, down. And if the fan is down, especially if it's green on the EMA fan down, these stocks, let's just bring one up. You can see what I mean. Yes, big day today. Bottom fishing coming in, inexpensive stock, big percentage gain. Let's go to the uh, intraday statistics here. 
10% gain today, but in a downtrend. In fact, if you go through the the database, you're going to find most uh, most stocks are in downtrends. Yes, we did have a big bounce today, but uh, it uh, may or may not follow through. Let's take a look at a new scan that I put in. Uh, Just last week. Now I I did uh, update this using Thinkorswim data, like I said, and uh, these are the industries that are in my leaders. Now I'll show you my leaders filter. EMA fan uptrend equals yes. 90-day uh, moving average volume half a million shares. ERG has to be at least 210. RS rank has to be at least 90. Kirkpatrick RS rank has to be at least 90 and it cannot be down more than 7% from the 52 week high. So what does that give us? What are the leaders after my update today? And you can see it's still a lot of oil stocks. Packaged food, conservative group, oil, conservative groups, oil, and this, these are the prices. Let's see how many of these leaders were up and how many were down. Uh, 52 were up and the rest were down. If you look over here, you can see that there were a lot of oil stocks that were up today, even though uh, when I looked at that heat map, many of them were down. I'm going to make a uh, list out of this group very quickly. Alternate G or make a group out of it. Eighty three in here. And I just want to apply. You can see that I'm in in my uh, new group there and uh, I want to see which of these have high relative volume for the day. Apple of course. Global ship lease church and dry end source. ADM, Berkeley Energy, Hess, and so on. Here's the intraday volume compared to the 20 and the 90 day, and you can see that these uh, had high relative volume for the day. Most active up, you're going to get the, pretty much the same list here. 52 week high, 52 week high intraday. This one hit a 52 week high in reverse. Interesting. So when you scan for 52 week highs, don't don't assume they close on the 52 week high because uh, often you'll see this. Uh, they'll move up and then they'll reverse, but it still counts as a 52 week high. OK, I want to just look at one more thing here. I'm going to look at the uh, Continuation indicator. This means that they're uh, above the three and the six, and they had pocket pivots today. Every one of these, a lot of the same uh, same stocks here. Let's look at this one, and I'll go up to my standard expansion contraction, and you can see the very heavy volume on this. VPOC turned positive. The uh, three went up through the six yesterday right there and it followed through today. Utility network. Just out of curiosity I'm going to uh, jump down to the undercut and rally. See if any of these were setting up uh, before today. This is a three below the six and they were and I don't these have not crossed yet. Uh, I'll drop down to the UNR charts themselves. And you can see that it's still light green. The three has not crossed the six on these, but they were up sharply today. I can also tell that just by looking down this column right here because none of them over here, if they had crossed the six, the three had crossed the six, this column would be populated. For the ones that did cross today, or yesterday, you can see it's down here at number two. These crossed, and I'm still in the market leaders. 
So there's end source again, Apple cross today, global, global ship leasing and so on. Sort on this, let's get the ones that did cross today. Aflac, take a look at it. What you're going to see here is you're going to see a dark green bar. Here's the undercut, the accumulation, and the start of the rally. Apple. Berkshire Hathaway. Exelon. Anyway, you can do this yourself. Just make a group out of the market leaders from the market leader scan, which you're going to find if you uh, update your add-on. You're going to find it down here at number 13 under my daily prospecting scans. Okay, I want to do a quick run through using my market analysis user groups, my broad market uh, indices, the major indices only, and I'll put this up here. Let's look at the all NASDAQ and I'll get into my HGSI charts. And uh, see, because of the lack of volume here, you just don't see the accumulation, the A's turning up at all, or the A's and B's. The, the D's and E's are still going up, as are the uh, A's and B's still flat to going down. Here's the shake and view of it. We're on D accumulation on the all NASDAQ. Percentage, we didn't even get a turn up in these, uh, the percent above the 20, 30, 50, and 200 because uh, it just wasn't that broad a rally. I mean, everything was up, but they're so beaten down and it's going to take some time to get above uh, to get these numbers up. But let's, let's do this. Alternate I. And put my crosshair on. Okay, this is today. Let's just look at the percent above the 50 day. 16%, 16 16.9. And that's today. Go back one day. 14.81, so it did go up, a small percentage, 14.81 to 16.19 today. I had to move this over a little bit. So we did get a low volume test on here. Let's look at a couple more of these charts and call it good. Uh, potential buy-sell signals. Nothing even close. Uh, did get a uh, advancing volume divided by declining volume. It was between uh, 3 to 1. Or it was at least 3 to 1, but it wasn't 5 to 1. The force index 2 turned positive. The VPOC still negative, though. We need more volume on this for it to be convincing. Just not seeing it. And let's see if there's uh, anything on the McClellan Offs. Yes, we did get a bounce on this finally. I, during the webinar yesterday, I was uh, talking about how this is so oversold compared to the last two years. Here is... It got the most oversold at this point yesterday, and it did turn up a little bit today. And here is what happened in the all NASDAQ. 2260 up today, 953 down. So percent advancing 66 to 28. So we did see some improvement there. The uh, trends, uh, like I said, are still down, but the internals are starting to move up a little bit. So. Uh, hopefully the bottom's in, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens next week. Before I go, let's uh, let's do the S&P 
500. You can see some nice improvement on that one. I'll make these charts larger. 434 to 68. A good day on the S&P. Let's go up to these other. Uh, let's look at the buy sell. Oh, now here, much different on this. Zoom in on that. You can see we got a five to one advancers uh, to decliners, at least a five to one, and uh, same thing on the volume, the force and the VPOC are both positive, so a tentative buy signal. That's what the yellow stands for. So looking over here, you can see the volume was a heavier percent to the 20, 50, and 90 day. Adva this is a six to one day on the advancers divided by the decliners. So that's good. Well, while I'm at it, I'll just leave this screen up here. Let's go to the S&P 1500. It was a 5.23 to one day. That's very good. That old NASDAQ, I probably should have started with it, but I just grabbed it. The NASDAQ 100 was a 19.4 to 1, 97 up, 5 down. And we had buy signals or tentative buy. The force 13 is the only thing that's negative. So uh, looking at this, the HGSI charts, uh, this gives us insight that you don't get in any other program. So uh, it's it's all here. And uh, you don't need to buy a bunch of software to, uh, to have access to a really good uh, market analysis. That's all I'm going to do uh, this weekend. Uh, I'll be doing uh, reports hopefully every Friday or Saturday, Friday afternoon and releasing them on Saturdays or Saturday morning.